Oh, I know you know all about the Casey Anthony case, because who could forget the young mother who didn't report her little girl missing for an entire month and then got acquitted. But that is a whole nother story. What would you say if I told you I've got a case out of Tennessee that can top that timing? You need to get to know little Evelyn Boswell. Now, according to police, her babysitter was the last person to see the toddler on December 10th, 2019. And she wasn't reported missing for more than two months. And the person that finally did raise the alarm wasn't even the baby's mother. Now, let me take you through this. Hey, I'm Amy. This is True Crime Recaps, the only channel bringing you all the crime in half the time. We dig into cases you know and a lot that are still developing to bring you all the facts without the fluff. Now, if that sounds good, it would mean the world to us if you took a second to hit the like button and subscribe so you never miss a recap. Let me tell you about Evelyn Boswell, the cutest little schnooker you have ever seen. On February 19th, 2020, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation issued an Amber Alert for a missing 15-month-old girl. According to police, Evelyn's babysitter was the last person to see the toddler on December 10th, 2019. Red flags shot up immediately. Why did it take two months to report the baby missing? It took Evelyn's grandfather, Tommy Boswell Sr., who hadn't seen the baby since Thanksgiving, to call the Department of Children's Services and report her missing in February. Well, his call set off a chain reaction of odd events, leading to one TBI agent discovering something they'll never unsee. By February 20th, everyone in Sullivan County had seen a picture of Evelyn. On the 21st, the TBI began looking for a stolen gray BMW that might be connected to the case. Two individuals were inside, maybe Evelyn's kidnappers? County Sheriff Jeff Cassidy spoke to the media later on the 21st. His office was dealing with a lot of conflicting stories, a trend that would carry through the entire investigation. Now, one report claimed the child was last seen on December 26, while the babysitter's story about seeing her on the 10th seemed more accurate in his eyes. Then someone asked the simple question, what about the mother? Megan Boswell was 17 when she gave birth to Evelyn. Her boyfriend and Evelyn's father, Ethan Perry, was stationed on an army base in Louisiana when his daughter went missing. Megan initially claimed that Evelyn was in his hands, but investigators quickly learned that that was a lie. Sheriff Cassidy mentioned that Megan's stories weren't adding up as he spoke to reporters. He described the information as conflicting and inaccurate, but wouldn't go into detail. We can assume that this story about Ethan was one of those inaccuracies, one of several wild goose chases that Sullivan County police would eventually go on. In North Carolina, FBI agents finally caught up with that gray BMW, and inside they found Angela Boswell, Megan's mother, Evelyn's grandmother, and her boyfriend, William McLeod. Now, both had rap sheets as long as a child's Christmas list, but neither knew anything about Evelyn's disappearance, or so they claimed. Later that day, News 5 reporters caught up with Megan outside a Bristol courthouse. She said she knew who took Evelyn, but she didn't report the child missing earlier because she was afraid that this kidnapper might run away. As far as who exactly had her baby, she she very vaguely claimed that she was with someone she trusted to keep an eye on her while she was at work. She pleaded for them to bring Evelyn back, saying all she wanted was to see her baby again. Meanwhile, Megan seemed to enjoy talking with reporters. She happily told a CBS affiliate that her daughter's favorite song was Baby Shark and she loved to take baths with her shark toys. And then days later on February 24th, she claimed her drug-addicted mother, Angela, took Evelyn to Virginia. She claims Angela left the baby in a silver camper and if the TBI didn't drive up there right now, she was gonna go herself. She said that they weren't taking her seriously and that her mother threatened her after after the Amber Alert went out. The thing is, the TBI did check the campground in Virginia, but they never found anything, which was chipping further away at Megan's credibility. So they asked Megan to take a polygraph. And while they couldn't use the results against her, they could help themselves by establishing just what exactly she might be lying about. But that test never happened. Megan claimed that she was pregnant and she couldn't take it. 
And meanwhile, the tip pool grew to 500 leads with none leading to anything substantial. Now, later that night, the TBI took Megan into custody and they charged her with filing false police reports. They were sick of her games, probably wanting to find baby Evelyn more than she did. And they set her bond at $25,000 and held her in county jail. So the rumor mills began swirling. Everyone thought that they knew what happened to Evelyn Boswell. Now, Sheriff Cassidy addressed the media, saying that everything circulating on social media had come from Megan. So speaking for the entire force, one officer said, every time we talk to her, her story changes every single time. Mm -hmm. Sounds a lot like the Casey Anthony playbook. So investigators then turned their attention to a pond in Wilkes County, North Carolina. Records show that the pond was tied to property owned by William McLeod's family. And it was too big of a coincidence to ignore, but the search came up empty, just like their other efforts. And by the 26th, Evelyn had been missing for two full months, or depending on who you ask, it may have been closer to three. So Angela and William were booked on possession of a stolen vehicle. As the story goes, Megan bought the 2007 BMW for her mom, but she never paid the original owner. Angela and William took off with it, and the owner reported it stolen. But Angela claimed that she didn't know, but nobody could tell when any of these people were telling the truth. Those several days came and went, and during that time, a judge denied Megan's request to lower her bail from 25000 to ten. They also arraigned William for possession of stolen property, but they released him under the condition that he wear an ankle monitor. The case was on the verge of going cold. The TBI was nearing 800 tips with none developing into actual leads. And then on March 6th, the final lead came in. And funny enough, the search for Evelyn Boswell ended the same way it began, with a phone call from her concerned grandfather, Tommy. He said that there was a shed in his backyard that might be of interest to investigators. So TBI agent Brian Frawley arrived on the scene and entered the shed on Tommy's property. Inside, he found a child's playhouse that Tommy had built for Megan many years ago. It looked like it hadn't been touched in years, but there was something hidden inside of it. So agent Frawley opens the playhouse door to find a trash can that seems extremely out of place. He hauls the trash can out of the shed and removes the top layer. Underneath, he sees a tiny leg sticking out. Now, Sheriff Cassidy addressed the media afterward, confirming that they had found the body of a 15-month-old girl. All they needed was an autopsy to reveal her identity. Backed into a corner, Megan changes her story once again. She claims that she and her boyfriend were sleeping with Evelyn when one of them rolled over and smothered the girl. It's unclear if Megan was referring to Evelyn's father, Ethan, or a new boyfriend at the time. But Megan remained in jail for filing a false report. At the same time, the chief medical examiner, who also happened to be an expert on fatal child abuse cases, conducted her autopsy. In her opinion, Megan's pants were on fire. It was just another lie. This was not an accidental death. This was a homicide. According to her, Evelyn was still alive when her killer wrapped her tightly in a fleece blanket, shoved her in a bag, and stuffed her headfirst into the trash can. Her neck was severely overextended and the blanket wasn't just haphazardly placed, it was deliberately wrapped around her body to constrict her breathing. In fact, it was so tight, it left imprints on the baby's face. They also found crumbled foil blocking the child's airway. So unless Megan slept with Reynolds wrap in her bed, her accidental death story wasn't holding water, according to the medical examiner. Evelyn was wearing an unzipped purple onesie and a diaper when the agent found her. In the doctor's opinion, the child did not die in her sleep. She was too old and too big. But what about the other characters in this case, William McLeod and Megan's mother, Angela? Well, As I said, both have extensive rap sheets and they're currently facing their own legal problems. In May of 2020, while the TBI was building its case against Megan, William was arrested for child abuse and domestic assault. Sullivan County Sheriff spoke with a woman claiming to be William's ex-girlfriend and the mother of his son. 
On Saturday, May 23rd, she claims that Williams showed up for dinner, allegedly high on crystal meth. According to the report, he began assaulting her out of nowhere, and when his son tried to intervene, William hit him in the face. Now, sheriff's deputies found him nearby around 4 a.m. on Sunday and held him on a $50,000 bond for domestic assault. Neither is currently charged in connection with Evelyn's death, but as for William, he claims he only ever saw the baby a couple of times. But those charges could change, depending. Meanwhile, on August 19th, 2020, the sheriff's department officially charged Megan with 19 counts in connection with her daughter's death. With the COVID pandemic delaying everything in sight, the judge set her trial date for September 2022, more than a year after she was charged with murdering her 15-month-old daughter. Now, over the next year, both sides gathered what evidence they could to prep for trial. The district attorney thought he had an airtight case, while Megan and her court-appointed lawyer couldn't see eye to eye. As the trial got underway, the drama only amped up. Her lawyer insisted that photos of Evelyn taken from the crime scene were too graphic to show the jurors. He thought the photos might convince them to convict Megan on a purely emotional reaction. So while the medical examiner admitted that they were disturbing, she also pointed out that the whole case is freaking disturbing. But the judge ruled in Megan's favor, believing that the images were too haunting to show the jury. Now, as her trial date drew nearer, Megan moved to fire her lawyer for not calling witnesses she thought would help her. And he thought that they were going to do the opposite, and they kept butting heads as September rolled into October. Eventually, their attorney-client relationship got so bad, the judge had no choice but to ask him if the relationship was just completely broken, which is... Basically, a legal standard which allows an attorney to withdraw from a case. And the lawyer was like, absolutely it is. I'm leaving. And he said goodbye to Megan and exited stage left. So a new attorney was assigned to her, but the switch forced them to delay the case further. And by now, they'd already pushed the trial back to February of 2023. So stick with us to get some closure on this case in February. But for now, we can be grateful that something good came out of this tragedy, and here it is. Oh, Change.org petitioned Tennessee lawmakers to pass a new law called Evelyn's Law, which would make it illegal for parents to wait longer than 72 hours to report their child missing, which also does seem to be one of those laws that you can't believe you have to actually call a law. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't realize it had to be named a law for you to do it, but... It's just that easy for kids to quietly slip away, so now it's a law. So if your kid goes missing in Tennessee, you should definitely now, by law, do the right thing and call the police. In the meantime, what do you think of this crazy case? And that's your recap. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you like getting all the crime in half the time, go ahead and tap that subscribe button and the bell so you never miss a story. We're here Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, but don't go away. Catch up on more recaps right here, right now. Until next time, take care.